Welcome back to another video on my channel, which is a short follow-up on a recent video which I posted on electronic shutter on the new Nikon C9, which will hit our studio in December for a comprehensive review. In contrast to the Nikon C7 Mark II, the Nikon C9 has no mechanical shutter any longer and completely relies on electronic shutter, which is not a novum, but still a rare situation in the camera market as of today. With an electronic shutter only, the Nikon C9 needs a fast processing unit and in particular a fast readout time of the sensor. And in my video, I basically illustrated by a little bit of experimenting and the spec sheet of the new Nikon C9 that the readout time of the sensor will be around four to five milliseconds. Now in the meanwhile and below the video, I got a lot of comments and we had a very good, I think, engaged discussion about what to expect from the sensor and the processing unit of the new Nikon C9. I randomly picked here two comments, but there were many, many more comments and valuable hints and contributions to the discussion. Now in this short video, I will further explore more data points on the readout time of the sensor and take into account, of course, some of the hints and comments below my most recently posted video. And uh, by doing some experimenting with respect to electronic shutter on the Sony Alpha 1, we also get some benchmark because as I said in my other video, we can expect the Nikon C9 to do even better. And if the Alpha 1 is providing good performance on electronic shutter, there is really nothing to worry about when it comes to the Nikon C9 because one thing is for sure, the readout time and processing speed of the Nikon C9 will be even faster than what we see on the Sony Alpha 1. And now let's kick off the video. The setup I have here is I've mounted my Nikon C7 Mark II on a tripod and it's directed towards a little fan plugged into the wall and the fan has tiny little LEDs which should also create some nice lighting. What we will do is we'll find out at which shutter speed we can freeze the blades of the fan and we'll do the same experiment with the Nikon C7 Mark II and with the Sony A1. I will do this on both cameras with the mechanical shutter and then we'll switch to electronic shutter and we'll find out how this is actually changing what we get when we take the shot. First of all, let's confirm that we have the right settings. So let's go into the menu. Let's go into shooting and display. And then here on shutter type, we are on mechanical shutter is what we want. And let's just confirm for a moment that on silent photography, we are off, which is the case. So electronic shutter is deactivated. The Nikon C7 and the C7 Mark II have a fastest shutter speed of one over 8,000 seconds. That should be enough actually to freeze the blades of the fan. The lens I've mounted on the C7 Mark II is the standard zoom 24 to 70 millimeter, widest open aperture f 2.8. The same lens from Sony will be on the Sony A1. And I wanna shoot this at an aperture of f4 to get a little bit of depth of field. And uh, we start with one over 200 seconds and the ISO I let on auto mode freely float because the faster we get on the shutter speed, the higher will be the ISO we have here in the studio. By the way, I'm here in fully manual mode, of course, so we can freely tweak the shutter speed and the aperture, but the aperture we keep constant now at F4 for the rest of the shooting, also on the A1. So let's take a first shot and let's see how this plays out. And let's go into play. Let's zoom this a little bit. This looks sharp and crisp. That's the way I want it. Let's now switch the fan on and let's see how this looks in the live view of the camera. Quite nice, you see these rotating LEDs and now let's try to freeze the blades of the fan by a faster shutter speed. So let's go to one over a thousand seconds first. Let's take a shot. And if we look into that in the preview here, it's not freezing the blades. You still see the light trails from the LEDs on the blades here. Let's now speed this up and in order not to waste too much time, let's not do too much experimenting at which shutter speed we actually start to see the blades freezing. Let's just go directly up to, let's say one over 5,000 seconds. You see here the ISO value climbing up, of course, that's why I'm on auto ISO. So let's take the shot. And you see here, these, these blades are not mounted in a firm way, so you cannot expect this to be a straight line, but it's kind of freezing in the movement. We can go even faster here. We have headroom up to one over 8,000 seconds, so let's take the shot. And yes, I think that looks good. We can do this once more, maybe get a better end position of the blades when it's frozen. 
Let's go with this one here. So that's the reference image we now have at 1 over 8,000 seconds. We now come to the interesting moment where we deactivate the mechanical shutter and go to electronic shutter only. So let's do this here in the menu. Silent photography on. And now let's have a look. We shoot this at 1 over 8,000 seconds and let's see what we get. You heard no shutter noise, of course. Let's have a look at the image. Here we go. The blades are completely splintered and that's exactly what we call a rolling shutter effect from a readout time of a sensor and a processing speed which is not quick enough to keep up with the motion we see in front of the camera. So here are the three images again. Let's quickly have a look at them. The first one was the one where the fan was not in motion and clearly with increasing eyes, oh, these images get more noisy. I didn't get them through post-processing. I just took them out of the camera as they were. The second one was when we did freeze the blades by the mechanical shutter with one over 8,000 seconds and that looks pretty okay. So that was kind of fast enough to freeze the motion of the blades on the fan and get a reasonable image. And the last one and third one is the one where we switched from mechanical to electronic shutter and here the image and the blades are completely splintered. And that's, as I said before, the rolling shutter effect. So the readout time of the sensor of the Nikon C7 Mark II in combination with its processing speed is not fast enough to freeze that movement without completely destroying the image in front of the camera. I have now switched cameras and we have the Sony Alpha A1 on the tripod facing the fan in front of the camera. Let's quickly confirm in the menu that we have the settings right. So on shutter type, we are on mechanical shutter here, which is good. Let's go to the same settings, f4.0, ISO on auto, 1 over 200 seconds, which was the first shot we took with the Nikon camera. Let's control the sharpness. So if we zoom in here, this looks really good and it will get noisy over time because the ISO will climbing up in the same way as we saw it before on the Nikon camera when we make the shutter speed faster. Let's now switch on the fan again. So let's do this carefully, not to change anything, nicely rotating in the live view, same lens parameters as we had on the Nikon, as I said before, 24 to 70 millimeter, both lenses shut at 70 millimeter focal length and aperture, as I said, f4.0. Now let's go on the shutter speed to the 1 over 5,000 seconds we had before and almost good let's go up to 1 over 8,000 seconds so we get the parameter to be the same on the Nikon and the Sony cameras and here we go this is freezing now the blades and uh, you see motion blurriness is still a little bit in the image but we have now the same setup as on the Nikon and now we are going to change gears and go to electronic shutter as before on the C7 Mark II. So let's go into the menu again. Let's go on shutter type to electronic shutter. And now let's take the shot with the electronic shutter, same parameters as before on mechanical. We should hear no shutter noise here. See how much better this looks. No splintered appearance of the image. And I think you see a little bit of distortion here, but given the high speed we have here of these blades from the fan, this is a really good result. And looking at the three images we did shoot in the same way as before what we shot on the Nikon C7 Mark II, we have here the first image where the blades were not in movement and the fan was silent. Then we have the one where we did freeze the blades by mechanical shutter and 1 over 8,000 seconds shutter speed. And here's the one when we switched from mechanical shutter to electronic shutter and the difference between the two images coming from the Nikon C7 Mark II and the Sony Alpha A1 could not be more different. What does this now mean for the new Nikon C9? And uh, many people in the comments referred to DP Review, which is a source of knowledge I use very, very often for my work. And they have published on their website the following data. For the Nikon C9, they say the E shutter rate, which is basically the readout time of the sensor, is 1 divided by 270 seconds. For the Sony A1, it's 1 divided by 260 seconds. And for the Nikon C7 Mark II, which we just used in our illustrations here, it's 1 over 16 seconds only. The slow E shutter rate of the Nikon C7 Mark II is the reason why we saw that splintered image when shooting these fast moving blades of the fan with 1 over 8,000 seconds on electronic shutter. The Sony A1 in contrast to the Nikon C7 Mark II did quite well 
when shooting on electronic shutter with the same shutter speed of 1 over 8000 seconds. And since we now here see that the Nikon C9 in its e-shutter rate is even faster than the Sony A1, we can fairly well assume that the Nikon C9 in the same experiment as what I did in this video will do even a bit better than the Sony A1 and the rolling shutter effect will hardly be anything we are going to see on a Nikon C9 and we will be fine with electronic shutter only. In contrast to me, DP Review clearly has a lab environment where they can also measure the readout time of the sensor or the e-shutter rate as they call it on their website. I can only rely on data points I get from the specs and uh, someone else in the comments mentioned that Nikon actually in a verbal update provided this one divided by 270 seconds. But for me in the specs, the flash swing speed as said in my previous video here is a good first estimate for the readout time of the sensor. What we can conclude now is that in an electronic shutter only camera, the readout time of the sensor is at least as fast as the flash swing speed we get in the specs of the camera. And for the C9 in particular, it's faster than the flash swing speed of 1 divided by 200 up to 1 divided by 250 seconds. It is actually at 1 divided by 270 seconds since we can fully trust these measurements done by DP Review. In my little experiment here, the Sony A1 did comparably well in the shooting and since the Nikon C9 is even a bit faster, the Nikon C9 will do even better than the Sony A1. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.